Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our speakers for this week. Um, Brett Carey and Jim Wallace. They are here from Star Financial. They've taken some time out of their day to come speak with you guys about the financial plans for a business. Um, so I'll let them kind of give you a little bit of background information on themselves and why they're qualified to speak on this. Um, but if you guys can just give your undivided attention, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you I'm here. qualified, Brett is not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him do most of the talking. <laughs> Thanks for having us here. Um, as she said, we're both with Star Financial Bank. Uh, we're commercial lenders at Star. Um, anybody know what commercial lenders or commercial bankers do? Any idea? Any guesses? Commercial. Commercial? What's that mean? No, I was asking you to say commercial. Oh, commercial. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Commercial lenders, another name for business lenders. Uh, so, so we work with all kinds of business, all sizes of businesses, um, not only in Marion and Grant County, but all over the state of Indiana. Um, so, you know, that's we're working with business owners, um, chief financial officers, day in day out, um, helping them solve some of their financial problems and, and come up with some plans louder. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. What's that, Tim? Sorry, sorry. Can you, guys um, all, can you hear us back there? I can hear you. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Like I, said, I will qualified. speak up. He's not. <laughs> um, no, Brett's right. It's a nail on the head. We, we work with uh, businesses all over the state, but we specialize here in, in Grant County. Uh, we have Star Bank. Uh, there's about 48 branches throughout the state. We, our our day to day job is, is taking care of our customers, the businesses, and, and looking for new customers that um, that need loans, that, that need financial assistance. And we've got a little uh, sheet here to go through with you. We can we can tell you how we do that. What the cus what we look for a customer, what the customer looks from us, um, what's needed when starting a business, how you start that business, <coughs> and, and the process of, of going through and getting the loan. Um, Please don't hesitate to ask any questions. We'll try and answer to the best of our ability. Why do? Why would a business owner or a new business need a bank? What's a reason? Uh, to hold their profits or what they make for the day. Or the sure, sure. As a way to transact money. They take money in when they make a sale. They pay somebody when they purchase materials or anything like that, right? What's another reason? Anybody else? Loans, loans for well, when you're starting a business it's like you're probably not going to make any profit so it's not a lot of people will know about you or know about your product but it costs a lot to advertise and to start your business sure you might need equipment mm -hmm. um, you know you're going to have you're going to have expenses before you generate any sales right so yeah you're exactly right anything else any other ideas Both good answers. You're yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, um, Two very common things yeah. that, that we see new businesses need and, and come to us for. We hold deposits for <coughs> customers. We also give the customers loans. Um, two, two of the main reasons. There's, there's a variety of products, but those are two of your basic, uh, two of your basic needs for startup companies. So when, when you see this first slide and it says the financial plan, what's, what's that make you think of? What what is a financial plan? How to spend your money? How to spend your money? That'd be part of it. Yeah. Budget. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. All the money that will be needed to start and sustain the business, and how debts will be repaid. Resourceful. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All all are right answers. So we'll move into, move into this. A good financial plan shows how much cash you need to start your business and why you need that. Um, it also shows where you will get that money from and how you will repay that either to investors or to bankers. Because when we as a bank loan you money, what, what is our ultimate goal? We want paid back. So how, how are you as a new business going to be able to generate enough money to pay us back? 
Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Now here's, here's just another way to look at it. How will you make and manage your money? Okay. So when, when you're thinking about a forecast or uh, predicting how your business will perform, well, you're making, you're making an educated guess, okay? So you're, hopefully you're going out um, using, using resources in the library, using the internet, uh, doing enough research to find a need uh, and that's why you have a business, right? There's a need in the market that you're trying to fulfill. There's, there's a certain product that's not available that is really needed. So that's what you're trying to do. Um, so, so with part of this business plan and this financial plan, you're going to forecast the first two years of your business operations. Why, why do you think you forecast the first two years, not just the first month or first two months? It's going to give you a good educated guess on where you're going to be at in your business for the next couple of years. You know, if you're coming to Star asking for a loan and you say, well, we're going to make a million dollars the first year and two million dollars the next year, we know that's not realistic. It might be, but in most cases, that's not realistic. We want to be able to see where you're going to get, get your income from and the expenses that are going to come out of that. So where's your revenue going to come from? How are you going to sell that revenue? What expenses you're going to have? With, with making that revenue on the income statement side of things. On the balance, state, on the balance sheet side of things, we're going to want to see um, what type of cash you're going to be carrying, uh, what kind of debt you're going to have, what loans you'll have out there, and, and the equity in your firm. But Brett, to Brett's point, he's right. We want to see two years of, of history. Oh, I'm sorry, two years of projections. But we want to see realistic projections. Um, <coughs> being conservative on your projections is not a bad thing. You know, being realistic with your projections. So there's there's six parts or six <clears throat> aspects of, of the financial plan that you guys you guys will be putting together for each of your businesses. Uh, the first is cash requirements. Um, so we'll jump into that one. So how much money do you need to open your business to start your business and to operate it? Uh, for an extended period of time until you start generating sales and generating some profit. Um, so this, this is an estimate uh, of what you will need uh, for startup funds. So what could some startup funds be? Some startup needs for your business? Equipment. Equipment. Location. Location. Yeah. Advertising. <coughs> Advertising. Yeah. Got to pay for the utilities and building. What was that? Employment. Yeah, you're going to have to pay your people before you generate any sales, right? Anything else you can think of? Production. Yeah. So if you're if you're making a product, it's going to cost you something to buy that material to make it, right? So yeah, you'll need you'll need some material purchasing, some inventory purchasing. Um. And it goes in goes into monthly expenses after that. I, the general kind of rule of thumb is is three months worth of expenses as a startup. Um, I would plan on a little bit more than that, uh, maybe four to six months, uh, just to be safe, so your businesses aren't um, strapped for cash. Uh, you know, four or five months down the road, if sales don't pick up quite as quickly as you anticipate. If you have a seasonality business where your sales aren't as strong in the summertime as they would in the wintertime, you want to be able to have backup. You want to have three, four, or five months of backup uh, of, of cash. You want to be able to support your business during your slow time. You, you might not be a seasonality business. You might just hit a rough patch. But you want to be able to have those funds uh, during that slow time to keep your business running. You don't want to go into business and only have a month worth of, uh, of backup and be out of business in two months, right? So this is the, the actual format that you'll use when you're, when you're putting your financial plan together. Um, I'm not sure, is it an Excel form or is it just hard copy, Charity? Hard copy, okay. So you'll be able to fill this out as far as specific pieces of equipment, what type of building you'll need and estimate a cost for that. Um, I think one of the key things you'll want to keep in mind is be as detailed as possible as this. 
Uh, any investor that you go to to try to raise money or any bank you go, go to to try to borrow money, we like detail. The more you can tell us about what you're going to do with our money, the more we like it, the more comfortable we feel, and the safer we feel our money is. You guys haven't started the uh, business plan yet, right? It was last week. Okay, so just started. Anybody okay. have any good ideas yet? You don't have to share them, but you guys been thinking about any good ones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Right. You can share with us afterwards. Yeah, you can tell us afterwards. So you don't tell everybody. <laughs> Brett will probably do it best option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so the the next part of the financial plan is cash sources. So where are you going to get your money to start your business? Um, all businesses require money to start. You can't generally you can't start a business with nothing. Uh, very very difficult to do. Uh, so you're going to need some sort of financing or some sort of money to help you get started. So where's that going to come from? What are what are some different options that are laid out up here? Um, investors. That can be that can be outside investors. It can be family. It can be friends. It can be anybody. Uh, you can get bank loans. Uh, that's where we come in. That's what we do day in day out. Um, you know, you may need some, you may need different types of loans. Uh, so you may need some short-term loans uh, for things like inventory um, or mater raw material to start building your product. Uh, you might need longer-term loans for equipment or a building purchase or real estate purchase of some kind. Does that all make sense? Everybody knows when, when a bank loans you money, when you pay us back, the bank is going to charge you an interest rate. So it's going to cost you money to borrow money. It's, it's not free. So you got to take that into account when you're putting together your business plan. Um, some of you might have family or friends that are willing to invest in your business. Chances are they're not going to do that for free either. So it's something to think about when, when you're thinking how you're going to get money to start up your business. It costs you money. So the more you're prepared, the better idea you have, the more detail you have. Um, it might go a long way in getting a lower interest rate, which will cost you less mo money in the, in the long run. What is the average interest rate? That Good question. I, I'd say for, for what you guys are doing, uh, you can use 5% as kind of a rate for, for any bank loans you might be using for your business. What, um, why, would, why would a bank like us uh, maybe use different... Um, length of loans or term of loans as we say it for different types of things so why would we maybe go only six months or a one-year term on inventory or uh, material to build your product and we might go seven years or ten years on a piece of equipment or a building you have any idea why we might do that yeah, exactly. The building and the equipment will last longer, she said. That, that's exactly right. So, so if, you're, if you're purchasing something to start making your product, you're going to make your product and then you're going to sell it, right? So that should be a relatively short-term investment. Does that make sense your to everybody? Gonna, your inventory is going to turn over. You yeah. plan to sell your inventory. It's going to go out your door. Um, we give you a, a loan for piece of equipment to, uh, let's say, print t-shirts, uh, a printing machine, you're going to have that in your warehouse or distribution center for, for a long time. That, that piece of equipment's going to be there. So we'll give you a longer loan on a piece of equipment as, a, as opposed to something like your inventory. For, for what you guys are doing, I would go ahead and, and consider using five to seven years for the length of the loan for a piece of equipment and then 10 to 15 years if you have to buy a building uh, or any piece of real estate like that. And then for anything anything that you're just using to say purchase inventory or anything like that, um, I would use kind of a one year time frame on that. If you're starting a business, and you're brand new to the business, to the market, rent your building for a while, save your cash, use it as an expense. Try not to get a loan on the building. You don't want to go all in on the building quite yet. 
you agree? Yeah, yeah, because it's a it's a very long long term asset, and and will take some time for you to generate a return on that. So, upfront, yeah, it probably does make sense to to rent uh, a facility where you're going to build your business. Any questions right now before we move on? No? Quiet group. So the, the amount of funding you'll need to start your business is obviously going to vary from, from group to group and team to team, depending on what kind of business you're in. Um, so, so some sort of um, large-scale manufacturing company will require a lot more capital than a very small uh, bakery. Just, just for an example. Does that make, make sense? Because you'll need a bigger facility, you'll need a lot more equipment, uh, and it'll take a lot more money to, to get going with that, right? So uh, coming up with, with how much money you'll need is very, very critical to your financial planning. Um, and, and you need to start out by making a list of everything you will need to run your business to make your product, to build your products, uh, whatever it may be. So then, uh, just like we talked before, some of the sources of your funding can be loans uh, from banks as well as money from investors. So that's, that's the next thing you need to consider. First, first, it needs to be how much money do you need? Next is where am I going to get this money? Okay. And this is, this is the second part of your guys' formal plan, which will be the cash sources. So is it coming from outside investors? Is it coming from short-term loans? Is it coming from long-term loans? Uh, you'll just be able to fill this in uh, just like you did your cash needs form as well. Any questions on this? Does it all make sense to everybody? Are we going too fast? No? Okay. This is the fun part, income statement. This is where you're gonna start making money. You're gonna, you're gonna uh, render your service or are you going to sell your product and the customer's gonna pay you for that. So you're coming up with your business plan, make sure you get a good product that somebody's gonna want or a good service that somebody's gonna need. And then you determine the cost of that and that's gonna be your revenue. Um, Below the revenue, you're going to have your expenses. What it's going to cost, the cost that you incur during the year, um, interest, you know, cost of selling the goods, uh, your payroll, your administration, your taxes, any type of expense that you're incurring while making the product that you're selling is going to be your expense. Um, you take your expense minus your revenue, you're going to have your income or your net loss you're doing those projections for the first couple of years you might you might anticipate having a couple of months worth of losses but you're going to eventually want to get to a point where you're making that income does that make sense to everybody uh, does anybody know what some of those expense items what what is cost of goods sold shipping shipping yeah that could be part of it yeah What's that? What about like what's like if it's something you just sell in the store? Mm -hmm. and the store is like interest on how much you sell. Like they get a part of it. Does that count? Yeah. Yeah. Sure could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think of it this way: What's it cost you to make your product? Okay. So if you're selling pies or you're selling cakes what's it cost you to make that one cake that would be your cost of goods sold so it'd be your labor it'd be your material it'd be everything rolled into that okay you want to get to a point to where whatever product you're selling 
you're able to find the right solution to sell that product for more than what it's costing you to build that product. And that's how you get to your net income. Is it better for that bottom net income to be positive or negative? What's that? Positive? Yeah. Correct. Absolutely. When it's negative, you're working at a net loss. Um, if you're working at a net loss, you have to have enough capital to sustain your, your company. So you want to keep your profit. I, I know one thing that I hear that students struggle with every year is, is making sales projections. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way to do it is, is, is not predicting an annual sales projection. You want to start even daily, weekly, monthly, um, depending on the seasonality of your business. And you want to go month by month and project those sales. You don't want to do it all at once, right? You want to, you want to do it on a month by month basis. Do your research. Um, find out product that you're selling, you know, see what you can find about that product, see how they sell, and, and go on a weekly or monthly basis. Start start small and, and build to a, a annual basis, a yearly basis. Yeah, I think, I think starting, uh, you want to look at things on a much more frequent basis, just like Jim said. I mean, we, we deal with a lot of big companies that still do that same thing. They look at, they look at their projections one to two years out on a monthly basis or a, even a, a weekly basis sometimes. So I, I think breaking it down to that type of level will, will sure help you out a lot. Good question. So how are you going to come up with a price for your product or a price for your service? What's, what's that going to be based on? Other prices? Other prices, yeah. That should be an aspect of it. Competitive products. Uh, so, so what are competitors pricing their similar product? I would say crunch up your numbers and do the math. Like it costs me this, this, and this, do this, this, and this. Absolutely. How much should I charge to make a profit to distribute? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're exactly right. So, so part of it is, like you said, competitive aspects. The bigger part is exactly what you said. So you, you got to get a really, really good grasp on what it costs you to make your product. And then how much money do you need to make to grow your business on, on each individual sale? So great answer. Does that make sense? Yeah? And that goes, that goes right into how much will you make. And, and I think it, it will really, really help you guys if you kind of reverse these, these two things. So start, start here. How much do you want to make? Okay. So start at that. Figure out what your costs are. And then back into what your sales figure, what your sales price needs to be. Okay. And here's the format that you'll use for all of that. And I think this is this is based on annual figures. Yeah. You got your revenues up here that I was talking about. Um, the money that you're bringing in, what you're selling your goods for. Go with year year one and year two. But as we mentioned before, you know, start weekly or monthly. Um, take that monthly figure times 12, obviously, to get your year. And then write out your expenses below. Again, you want to come up with a good plan so that you're going to have a net income, not a net loss. So there's a, there's a column here. I don't know if you guys have this in front of you. Do they have it yet? So there's a column here that says percent of revenues. Why would we have that? So there's a column here beside year one that says percent of revenues. What's that tell you? So your revenues is going to be 100%, right? Because that's what everything is based off of. So if your net income is 10%, you're going to make how much money on $1,000 of sales? Or we'll make it on $100,000 of sales, 10%. You'll make $10,000, right? So why is that important to kind of know that information as a percentage? 
replace that percentage off from next year's percentage? Yeah, yeah. It kind of kind of helps you kind of grow into to those other sales figures and project those a little easier. So if you can if you can consistently make ten percent, right, on your revenues, and you increase sales twenty percent. That's obviously going to be a bigger number down low. So it just it kind of helps you as you are budgeting and creating creating these forecasts. So can anybody tell me what a balance sheet is? No, uh, that's a check register. A balance sheet is, is something businesses use. Any ideas? What do you owe? What do you owe? Yeah, what do you own? What do you owe? Uh, so it's a listing of all of your assets and all of your debts or what you owe other people. And it, it kind of spells out assets or items of financial value that belong to the company. We like to break down assets into two things, current assets versus long-term assets. Um, your current assets are anything that you'll be able to turn into cash within the year. So that can be cash or that can be inventory. Um, your cash will you'll keep your cash. Your inventory, you plan to sell and turn that into cash. Um, again, it's current. Current assets, anything that can be turned into cash within the year. What would be an example of a long-term asset then? We talked about giving a loan for it earlier, the building. Yeah, absolutely. Building, a piece of equipment, yeah. a car, um, along those lines. You, know, you don't plan on turning your building into cash within the year, right? So that's your long-term that's your that's your long-term asset. Below that, you got liabilities. Um, we, we also like to break that into two things, current liabilities versus long-term liabilities. Current liabilities would be anything that you plan on paying back within the year. Um, if you have a line of credit with a bank, you, you, you pay that back annually. It's, it's paid back, you pay interest only on a monthly basis, but it's paid back to the bank each year. A long-term liability is debt that's not due for more than a year. Something you just said, you, typically pay back your long your, your long term assets with your long term liabilities um, so you plan on paying those over over a long period of time anything longer than a year would be your long term liabilities anybody i just said it but what's a good example of a long term liability what would you what would you uh, what would you have to be paying back a long term liability building equipment so the, the very last part of it is owner's equity. Any, anybody know what that means down here? How much the owner makes? How much the owner makes? Like, himself? It would be part of that. Um, the, the better way to, to look at it is the value of all of your assets minus the value of all of the debts you owe, okay? So would that, would that be better being a positive or a negative number? Positive? positive. Yeah. <clears throat> Why is that? Remember the question earlier that she, she said, if you have $10 in your pocket and no debt, you have more money than 25%. Is that right? You don't owe anything if you're in the right. right. You want right. to be able to own more than you owe. I mean, it's not a bad thing to owe money, but you want to be able to to owe more than than what you own. You want to be able to own more than you owe. Any of the assets are going to be what you own. Any of the liabilities are going to be what you owe. Once you subtract those, you get your your equity in your company, what your company's worth. You want that to be positive, like Brett said. This just means that if you were to sell everything that you owned as a company, and you were to pay off all of your debts you'd still have cash left. That would be what you made from selling everything, right? So here's, here's the, the form you guys will be using uh, for the balance sheet. Um, so your, your current assets will be listed here and you always wanna have a description of those. Uh, over here will be the values of those. 
same thing with the non-current assets, and then all those will be added together to be your total assets. Year one and year two, and then down at the bottom will be your current liabilities, so short-term loans, and your non-current liabilities, which will be any long-term debts that you owe, and that'll be your total liabilities, and then your total assets minus your total liabilities will be your owner's equity. So current and non-current deals with time. And current is like stuff that needs to be paid sooner than non-current. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yep. So have you guys started doing any research on on the business that you're proposing or the product you're going to start making. You've started doing some research on that. So what have you been using to research? What have you been using to research? Internet? Internet. Yeah, absolutely. Easiest source we have, right? Library. <laughs> um, what Brett's getting at, when you do your online researches, there's certain sites you want to go to, to to make sure your information is accurate. Um, .gov, .edu, or .org are the most credible. Um, that information's been backed up. You know it's true. Um, but it's important to do your research. I mean, you're going to want to be able to to know to know the plan that you're looking for is is true. You want true information. You, if you come to us for a loan. We'll, we will do our research and make sure that your projections are true. So make sure you're doing the proper research. There, uh, there's some sources out there that you can use um, that, that the government puts out. Uh, the Small Business Administration is one source. Uh, they have a multitude of loan programs for small businesses. Um, and, and they have a lot of resources on their website that, that go along with not just loans but, but anything related to a small business. So um, I think that's SBA.gov. Is that right, Charity? SBA.gov would, would be one place you could definitely start looking at. Um, we'll leave our email addresses, contact information. Uh, so, so any any questions that you guys would come up with, um, we'd be more than happy to help you out with as well. You know, we ha we have access to to maybe some more industry reports and things like that 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 you guys may not be able to find on the internet. That might be helpful to you as well. So, so if you have any questions like that, and we can provide some of that information, we'd be more than happy to share that with you. So the last part of your financial plan, you just need to have a brief summary. Um, you know, it can be in bullet points, it can be in paragraph form, uh, anything to kind of go over the most important things of your financial plan and kind of go over the highlights of everything. Um, so some things that you might include in this summary would be your revenue targets. So. How much money are you going to generate year one and year two? How much money are you going to make year one, year two? Um, how much money it's going to cost you to start your business? Uh, where you are going to get some of that money? Is it going to come from investors? Is it going to come from bank loans? Um, and I would be, I would be brief in some of these. Um, I think it it would be better to have those in bullet point form, just so it is to the point and everybody can see uh, real quickly where where your business is going. And then cite your research in that summary. Um, it's not going to hurt to do that. Let us you know, let them know where and how you did your research. Questions? That is all we have. So any questions? Yeah. More than one person financially supporting my business uh -huh. for a long period of time, and I go to a bank to ask for something more short term. Would that look? Would they look down upon that? The fact that I have people financially supporting me in the long term rather than the short term, or would it be like a positive thing that they can get their money back soon rather than? Well, um, if, if you're coming to a bank needing some short-term funding and you have a lot of long-term investors it's not not a bad thing from our perspective because 
there's usually investors are different than banks. Um, so they are, um, so we're, we're giving you loans, we're giving you debt. Most of the time when you have outside investors, they're taking a piece of ownership of your business. So they're taking equity in your business. Um, so that is, that's money that the business can use as they see fit. The only thing you have to do is give up some of the ownership of the business. Right, is well, I mean like, because when you go to a bank, you want to have credibility that you can pay back their money. Right. right. And I didn't know if it would be a negative thing for them to look at like, she needs more than one person to financially support this business that she has. No, no, I wouldn't think so, no. Um, we generally don't like to see a lot of banks uh, funding an individual company, uh, but as but as far as individual outside investors, we usually don't look at that as a bad thing. It means you got a good plan and people believe yeah. in your business, so it's not a bad thing. Any other questions? So at the end of the day, you basically want to know how much money they want, what they're going to use it for, and how you're going to be paid. Yes. That is the basics of it. Yep. It's always good to have more money than <laughs> Exactly. All right. Thanks for having us guys. We appreciate yeah. it. We hope you learned something. We'll we'll stick around for a few minutes if anybody has individual questions for us. Okay? Take them up on that offer. Uh, I think their email addresses are also in your binders. So okay. you guys will accept emails, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, so if you guys have questions later, definitely reach out to them or us. Um, if you guys are looking through your binders, you should see that you have hard copies of all of those financial documents that they went through. Uh, so that, I believe, is your assignment for this week. You guys can start thinking through that. Um, after that's a great idea. We will also put digital copies on the Google Drive so that that might be easier for you guys to work with. Um, you guys can start messing with the hard copies if you want just to kind of brainstorm and then maybe do a, a digital copy as your final draft. Um, so we'll get that posted for you. Um, you guys had a little bit of homework from last week to start um, working on mission statement and those things. So make sure that you are keeping up on that stuff reach out to us if you have questions. And if you missed any previous sessions, those uh, videos are posted on YouTube. You guys should have received links in your Google accounts. Um, you can watch the videos and work through the makeup sheets in the back of the binders and just get those to us when you guys are finished with it. Yeah, and with the assignments, um, try and just send us something. Because um, we do want to keep up to date because it's important to, to stay ahead of this process. So. If you can't fill out that entire worksheet from last week on the business plan, that's fine. Just send an email that says, this is what we've talked about, this is kind of where we think we're going, and then we know that you're at least working through the process. Yeah. So we're not necessarily, at some point, we're going to look for complete documentation, but at this point, it's only week three, so don't stress out about it, but just send us as much as you can. Yeah. Just communicate with us. Keep brainstorming. Um, make sure you guys find time to meet together as a team. Um, whenever is convenient for you guys, you've all exchanged uh, cell phone numbers, right? Or emails, whatever's convenient. Uh, so make sure that you guys are keeping in contact and if you have any questions or if you want to send us documents and you have questions about where you're at, just let us know. And I think that's everything. So thanks, guys. Mentors. 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 We don't have that final yet. But we will, you will have them shortly. Oh, okay. We're hoping to. We're hoping to have mentors for all of your teams that are college students business majors that can come and meet with you guys just to kind of make sure you're on the right track. So we're hoping to get that set up soon. Um, so we'll keep you posted. Yeah. Hopefully by next week. Hopefully. That's what we're thinking.